Hi, and welcome to Easy Fishing. Today, I want to run through setting up a basic feeder and lead rig. So, take your line. We'll pretend that this is coming from the rod. Now, everybody will have their own way of doing this, but I'm following advice given by England Internationals. Now, some of them will thread a gripper stop on the line first, or a float stop, which I will do. Push it up the line, like so. Then, to attach your weight or feeder, very popular these days, especially with um, the top feeder anglers, are things like these. And this is a shop bought one. Now, it's a length of stiff line with a feeder bead at one end and a link clip for attaching your feeder at the other. Now, I'm not madly in love with this idea and I'll show you why. So, if you put this on the line and tie a hook length to it, should you wish to change it, you can't. And I think they're a bit cumbersome. So my method is really simple. All I do is take, usually, but not always, a Preston bead. That's one of these. It's just a little bead with a quick change clip on the end of it. And you can thread that on your line. Like this. Then I like to add either one or two gripper stops or rubber float beads. And this is what you end up with. Now, you can omit the stop, this one nearest the rod, but I like it sometimes because it gives you two options. You can slide it up the line, and if there's lots of bits of debris coming down the line, it can prevent some of it from getting tangled around your feeder and your hook link. But the other reason is that you can pull it up like this, even tighter if you want. You can actually put it right up tight like that and you can have a safe semi-fix. So if the fish are really hitting the bait and bolting, that immediately gets transfers of the weight of the feeder onto it. So that's another reason. Now, the next thing is you need to decide how to attach your hook length. Now, you might not be using a hook length, but for argument's sake, I'll say we are. Now, you have two choices. You can either attach your hook length loop to loop, which is what a lot of people do, but my way is slightly different. Again, it's aimed at versatility. So you make your loop in the end of the line. Again, make sure you tie a good loop Preferably with a loop tie for ease and perfect with three twists on it gives you a very strong knot or a figure of eight loop knot or if you're doing an overhand loop knot I prefer three turns. So you are left with that a loop. Now here comes the next bit. 
you need to form what's called a twizzled loop. The object of this is to stiffen this bit between the beads the, uh, between the float stops and the, the loop. It creates a stiff boom and its object is not to necessarily make a stiff boom but to prevent the line rubbing against the feeder. So how do you do it? So you take your line like this and you merely twist the line. That's all you have to do. There are several ways to do it, but basically you get hold of your end of your line, twist it in opposite directions. It's a bit fiddly, but it's well worth doing. Now as you do this, you will see it spinning up you are left with this a twizzled twisted length of line pinch the two ends together and tie them off with a treble overhand loop I always prefer three turns for extra security Most people will settle for two and with a doubled up line two is probably adequate but that's just my way of doing things. So just snip the loose end off. And there is the finished rig. So you have the optional bead which can be nipped up or just moved up out of the way a running quick change clip in this case a Preston a couple of uh, rubber float stops or gripper stops and a twizzled length of line now you're probably wondering why you need a twizzled length of line it's merely to stop the hook length rubbing against the feeder so I'll just clip a feeder on and show you So here's your feeder. Now the two float stops help to push that boom of line away, especially if you slide them right up to it, to the knot, like this. They really do help kick it away, but the object of thing is not to kick it away, is merely so that this length of doubled line is the bit that will rub against the feeder. So any sharp bits of edges on the feeder, lead weights, etc., won't damage the line so much. And if one strand should fray through, you still have another strand and attached. Now, you can leave it with a bare loop at the end and attach your hook lengths loop to loop. However, to refine this rig, I add a Creluso quick change connector. one of these this is a it's called a rolling quick snap because it has a rolling swivel and a quick snap on it it's rated to five kilos uh, that's about 11 pounds I think I'm useless at conversion so don't quote me on that but it's over 10 pounds anyway now people say oh but you've already tied a loop on well that's not a problem because you merely take your loop and your connector pass it through the loop the loop through the swivel eye of the connector like so and pass the loop over the thing and pull it tight so you have it secured like that now I just prefer this some people will prefer loop to loop but uh, if you're fishing double maggot baits or 
worm and cast or something that spins and you're casting out, we'll say, 50 yards with double maggot, by the time you retrieve that, that can have quite a bit of twist put in the line. So I prefer these and they're quick to change your hook length. So there we have the most basic and versatile feeder rig that you can have. So you have an optional float stop above the feeder, a feeder mounted on a, in this case, Preston um, free running bead with a clip, a couple of float stops, twizzled boom to either a loop or in my case, a quick change connector. Now you can buy the bigger plastic connectors, but I feel they're a little more clumsy and they don't have uh, a swivel, so I stick to these. Now, <coughs> whilst fishing with this, this is where this rig really comes in. You can change it about, so you can obviously just undo the snap link, take the feeder off, change it to another size feeder. If you wanted to, I have a, a slightly different way of doing things to some people. Now, should you want to not have a feeder, you don't need it. With this here, you just take a length of line. This line wants to be reasonably robust. Uh, probably eight pounds a good bit. So, take a length of line and basically tie a big loop. Can't use a loop tie for this, you have to do it by hand. The length of your loop you're looking for is, I don't know, four or five inches at the most. So again, I like a three turn knot. Wet it, pull it down, hold it for a second. And you are left with this, a loop of line. So, to use this, Take your feeder rig and merely clip the length of line into the clip. Like this. Then you can either add a appropriate size weight swan shots, two swan shots, three swan shots, whatever you need. I'll just slip a couple of swan shots on. Like so, and you have a link ledger. Couldn't be more simple. The only point I would say is make sure that the knot is in the quick change clip. So should it get snagged, there's absolutely nothing stopping these shot pulling off the line like that. Easy, so it's snag free. Well, not snag free, should I say, but if it snags up, at least you can pull the shots off the line. Being non-toxic, hopefully you're not poisoning the environment. Now, going back to those original feeder links that I showed at the start of the video, these things, you can take any feeder you like, take your length of line,
across the end of the loop through the eye on the swivel or whatever attachment you have pass it over the feeder put it back and there we have a paternoster feeder exactly the same you can have this link however long you like it you can have it an inch long two inches long three inches long for it doesn't really matter and you can still got the option should you want just unclip this bit of line and loop it from the feeder like so and then just put the feeder straight on the clip and there you have it so it gives you great versatility my rig you can fish any size feeder you can have it set up as a semi sort of bolt rig by pulling the stop back up you can feed it as a, use it as a linked ledger by detaching the feeder putting a, link, a loop of line on the clip here and pinching swan shots on it or a feeder should you desire you have two float stops that act as a nice buffer helps the thing kick it the line kick out and protects the knot from the weight of the feeder because sometimes you might be using a two ounce feeder and that's a fair old weight and on some extreme cases you might be using an even heavier one for barbling flood but that's another subject we'll go into that another time then you have your twisted loop of line so your hook link won't come into contact with the feeder a quick change clip which I prefer or a loop to attach your hook link to and there you have it in my opinion that is the most versatile rig you can have you can play around with this you can do what you like in theory you can lengthen the hook length by merely sliding the beads up but i don't do that what i do is i've added a refinement now when you look at pictures and videos of England internationals and the top feeder guys, they have a huge box full of thousands of different hook lengths. And if that's the kind of person you are, great. But the average angler is not going to want to lug around a box like this, you know, a big box full of different lengths of line. So I thought about this and I came up with a really simple solution. Tie your hook lengths one length. We'll, we'll say for argument's sake 12 to 18 inches. Don't ask me what that is in centimetres. Uh, I guess uh, uh, about 20 centimetres or thereabouts, but don't quote me. And what I do, and I found this works really well, is I pinched their idea and modified it. Now, most of these guys store their hook lengths on these type of uh, some sort of dense foam. And I thought, well, rather than having hundreds of hook lengths, I made them, so put some lengths of line these. one at 24, one at 18, one at 12, one at 36, and one at 5 feet. And I just popped them all onto here, onto a little piece of uh, tubing, and stuffed them in an old coconut ice cream, which was lovely shouldn't eat it because it's fattening but it was nice so the object of this is you take your spool and on it I've wound lengths of fluorocarbon at this length stated 24 inch hook extender I've called them hook extenders because they extend your hook length 
So they're, again, they're really easy to use. Just take your pin, unwind your hook length extender, like so. Incidentally, always stick the pins back in these. They're a bugger if you lose them. So we have a length of line with a loop. In this case, I've used 020 fluorocarbon. Now, why fluorocarbon? One, it's heavy, so it lays down on the bottom, preventing too much in the way of line bites. And to attach it, I just take my hook length, my quick change clip, and I take my hook length off. I then take my extender, put that on there, shut the clip down, and I have a 24 inch extension with a loop on the end to which I can attach my hook length. So in a few seconds I can change my hook length to whatever I want and being fluorocarbon it's pretty tough and abrasion resistant. This is Drennan Suplex fluorocarbon. Um, I tried fluorocarbons years ago and didn't get on with them. They were very stiff and had a bad habit of snapping unexpectedly. But this Drennan stuff is um, a vast improvement. There are other people make fluorocarbons, but I'm sticking with this one, not because it's Drennan, but because I know it. Uh, incidentally, it's accurate in diameter as well. And it lays nicely on the lake bottom. And there you have it, a simple way to change your feeder rig around. So if you use my simple rig, that I've showed you here and showed you how to tie. Yeah. In combination with hook extenders, you can fish a hook length anywhere between, we'll say, 12 inches to five or six feet if you want. No problem. Gives you utmost versatility. You don't have to carry around a huge box full of hundreds of different lengths of hook lengths, which for most of us is, <sighs> not really an option it's t just too much if you're an england international or a guy at the top of your game fine but i still think that this system is just as good and i have seen a, a top angler called uh, lee kerry who's um, a preston man um, and then he just used a normal length of uh, thick monofilament and cut it to length but with these, they're pre-edited. You don't have to cut them and tie loops and they're already done. So you just attach them and away you go. It's as simple as that. When you unwind your line off this, it's probably a good idea to run it through your thing, wetted fingers a couple of times, generating a little bit of heat. No, you don't want to melt it, obviously, and just straighten it out. And that'll help everything lie still. And there we have it. I believe that is genuinely the most versatile rig. It's easy to tie. Probably the only tricky bit is the twizzled loop. But once you've done it a few times, it is easy and you get used to it. And if you watch every f decent top feeder man uses a twizzled loop. Most of them use these booms that I showed you earlier. And the, I'll reiterate, the reason I don't like them is, well, I think they're a bit clumsy. And two, once you've got them tied up, if you don't want it, or you want a longer one or a shorter one, you ought to detackle completely. Um, as long as that loop of line is, I would say, a minimum of eight pounds, um, you'll be fine casting it, because people go, oh, it's only eight pound line, but they're probably only using six or eight pound, six pound probably mono as a, main line so the mono is going to give before that does so there you have it practice it use it you will find it such a versatile rig it'll catch you every species from virtually every venue now there are other variations but i'm not going to go into that i just want to show you the basic feeder rig so thanks for watching and i hope you've enjoyed something and i hope i've opened your eyes to what you can do um, I'm not a top matchman, I have no aspirations to be, it requires a lot of effort to be at the top of the tree, um, and a lot of money. Um, so, go away, 
approach your fishing, enjoy it, catching a lot of fish on it. So, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you soon on my next video. Bye.